Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and I've got a bit of a USB Type-C science experiment going on on my desk right now. And the reason why I am doing this is because I do some consulting work for Kensington. Uh, you might see me doing videos explaining how some of their products work on Amazon and a few other websites. And it's been a fun project because I have to think about all the things that a customer might run into when they're using one of these products. And one of the things that I was most curious about is how does a MacBook Pro, which needs about 85 watts of power from its power adapter, perform when it's plugged into a USB Type-C device like this dock here that provides only 60 watts of power? We know the Mac won't break. We know that it will get power to some degree. Uh, but I wanted to see what happens when it really needs more than what the dock can provide. Does it slow down? Does it not charge the battery? So we're going to take a look and see what we can figure out here uh, when using a larger MacBook Pro with one of these devices that only gives you 60 watts. And a lot of the USB Type-C power delivery devices I've tested typically max out around that level. So some of the uh, USB Type-C mini docks that have Ethernet and a few other adapters kind of top out there at 60 watts and I just wanted to get to the bottom of all of this. So what I've got here on the desk uh, is my phone running with my NDI broadcasting thing and we're going to point it at this little USB power meter that I got the other day. Uh, this one costs about $18 and when you plug it in it will give you a readout as to how many watts are being used and in what direction the power is flowing. So we'll check out a few other things that we can do with this a little bit later in the video. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Kensington is not sponsoring this video, nor are they reviewing or approving anything before it gets uploaded. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. And I'm doing this work to finish up a consulting project on this particular dock, just so you're aware of that. And they are paying for that consulting work, of course. I did buy the uh, USB power meter here with my own funds. And the dock here came in from Kensington as part of this project. So now that we got all that stuff out of the way, let's get this thing going here and see exactly how much power this MacBook needs. All right, so my MacBook right now is booted up and just kind of sitting at the desktop here. Uh, the battery is at 2%, so it is really, really drained. And you can see we're drawing uh, close to the max of what this adapter can provide because we are charging the battery right now. So at idle with a dead battery charging up from pretty much zero here, uh, we're drawing about 55 watts or so. Uh, now what I want to do is swap in the MacBook's uh, real power adapter. So I've got that 85 watt power adapter uh, plugged in on my power strip down there. So let me switch over here so we can see that switch being made. Uh, we're going to pull out the little USB adapter here, pop in the Apple power adapter and plug that in and we'll see if it draws any more power. And I wanted to jump in real quick with a quick correction. Uh, the power adapter that comes with the MacBook Pro 15 is actually 87 watts, not 85. Uh, so you'll see me referring to this as 85 throughout the video. It is in fact 87. All right, we can see that it is actually drawing more power because we have more power available uh, on that particular power adapter. Again, we're using the 85 watt power adapter from Apple here, which came with this laptop. So certainly we can charge the battery faster here, uh, especially when the computer is sitting at idle. Uh, but I'm very curious about now is what kind of performance impact this might have. Uh, so I think I'm going to run a few benchmarks here and see if we see any performance degradation or if we just see the battery stop charging or discharge more slowly. Uh, clearly here, when we had the 60 watt adapter plugged in, the battery was charging slightly slower just because it was not able to draw as much power. Now I'm curious to see if it's actually going to throttle things as well. Let's take a look. So we're gonna run the Geekbench benchmark here in a second. We're gonna run both the uh, CPU and GPU tests just to get a feel for what might be impacted here. But I did wanna show you one neat thing before we did that. Uh, so I have an app here running on the right side of the screen here called Battery Health 2. And you'll notice down here that we're charging currently with 50.9 watts. It's actually measuring uh, how much power the charger is drawing here inside of the laptop. And what I want to do now is just swap out uh, the cable here again and see what impact this has on charging so we can get a feel for what the dock is actually providing out of that uh, 60 watts or so we were seeing before. So we're going to plug that in. Uh, and I'm going to switch my little screen over here on this thing again so you can see that we're uh, once again going to probably step up to uh, 50 watts or so as things begin charging here. And what we'll see here on the battery monitor is that we're probably charging with less wattage uh, as we are using that dock that has a little less available to it. So you can see right here we're drawing at about uh, 29 watts or so to charge the battery 
while we're connected up with the dock, which is definitely less than what we saw just a second ago with the Apple power adapter. So it's really managing uh, how much power is available to decide uh, what can do what on here uh, based on the power that's available and what other needs the laptop might have. Very interesting stuff. All right, so now what I want to do uh, is go ahead and run this benchmark. So we're going to start with the CPU benchmark first with the dock, and then we'll switch to the Apple power adapter and see what happens. All right, so we are right now in the middle of a CPU benchmark on the Geekbench test. Uh, we're still drawing about the same amount of power, about 55 watts or so. Uh, my battery testing application here is indicating that we're still drawing about the same amount of power uh, even though the CPU is being taxed, although I'm not hearing my fans come on on the laptop just yet, which indicates it's not uh, maybe getting taxed all that much here with this test. So we'll have to uh, try one of the GPU tests in a second. Uh, but what I'm most interested in, though, is seeing uh, what score we get here with the dock plugged in versus what score we might get with the Apple Power Adapter in use. So let's let this finish up here. We'll see what the score is, and then we will go ahead and run it again with the Apple Power Adapter. All right, so the results here using the dock are in. We got a score of 4,338 on the single core test and 14,756 on the multi-core test. Uh, so now let's go ahead and plug in that Apple Power Adapter, which delivers more power. And then we're going to go back to the uh, test here and run it again and see what we end up with here. So we're just going to go back to the Mac uh, and we'll just go ahead and click on that run CPU benchmark again. We'll let that run out and see what score we get after it's done. So I'm about halfway through the test right now using the Apple adapter. You can see we're drawing a lot more power, about 80 watts, just because we have that available on that particular power adapter. Uh, we're charging with close to 50 watts right now. So we'll see what happens when the test comes back. But my theory here is that it's using uh, more power to charge the battery while still giving the CPU everything it needs. But we'll know for sure when this test wraps up in just a second and we get the results. Okay, so the results are in using the Apple 85 watt adapter. And as you can see here, at least with the CPU, uh, there's no noticeable performance difference. This is the uh, score with the Apple power adapter and that pretty much dead battery. Uh, here is the score from the dock. It is pretty much within the margin of error here. Just a very slight difference between the two tests here, at least using the CPU. Uh, so for CPU intensive applications, it appears as though using a lower powered uh, power adapter with your USB-C MacBook Pro 15 will likely charge the battery slower or perhaps it'll stop charging altogether, but it looks like it can uh, get the power it needs with that 60 watt adapter. Uh, so now that that test is done, uh, let's run a GPU test now and see what happens with that. All right, so we've got the dock now plugged back in. We're sitting at idle, drawing about 53 watts or so, likely charging that battery up again. And we're going to go back to Geekbench now and activate my onboard GPU here on this MacBook. And we'll begin that process, and we should see uh, some power draw from that here. Uh, again, the uh, meter here isn't changing at all, but I suspect that we're going to be seeing uh, less of the battery being charged here while we're running through some of these tests. So if we jump back now to the, uh, the little battery application we're running here, you can see that it is only charging with 2.3 watts right now as it's running some of these graphical benchmarks there. So I'm guessing here that uh, it is just directing that power over to the GPU uh, at the expense of battery charging. So we're going to let this finish up. We'll get a result here right now and then we'll try it now with the Apple power adapter. Uh, so we got here a score of 51386, and I suspect we might see, yep, there it goes, the battery charging jump back up after that test was completed. Uh, so now let's jump over to the Apple power adapter and see what kind of score we get now. All right, sitting here at idle, we're drawing about 81 watts charging the battery, and now I'm going to begin the test, and let's switch back over to my uh, Mac screen here to see what we get for charging. Uh, so we are charging with about 50 watts right here. I haven't seen it drop yet. Uh, the GPU test is running on this one. So I suspect that we're uh, you know, getting what we need out of that power adapter and still being able to charge the battery at pretty much a full clip here. I'm not seeing any real reduction in uh, charging as this test runs. And I did run a test a little bit earlier just to see if uh, anything happens here. We did drop down the 49 watts here. Uh, and the results are now in, and we're getting pretty much the same score. Again, pretty close within the margin of error here between the power adapter uh, and the dock. So it looks like the Mac is uh, basically trading off the charging speed for 
uh, whatever performance the computer needs. But let's take a look now at a test that uses both the CPU and the GPU to see if we end up with any throttling at all. Let's load up the Cinebench test. Okay, so we're powering the computer with the dock once more. We've got the Cinebench benchmark loading up here. As you can see, we're drawing about 55 watts or so, which is pretty much the max of what the dock can deliver. And again, we're taxing both the CPU and GPU with this test. Uh, and right now we're charging with about 7.7 .7 watts and running the full benchmark here. Again, that's taking advantage of uh, both the CPU and GPU as it's doing its thing here. So this is not a very um, long benchmark, so this should end pretty quickly here and we'll get an idea of its score. Uh, we're seeing now that the charging has dropped to 5.7 watts and then we'll let that finish up and we'll see what kind of frame rate we get uh, as a result of the test here again using the dock. And it looks like we came in at around 81 frames per second. Uh, so now we're going to switch out uh, the power adapter one more time and see what we get on this test with the larger power adapter. Okay, so we got the Cinebench benchmark here running once again. The uh, computer's drawing about 80 watts of power here or so at the moment. And if we switch over to my screen here, we can see exactly what we're getting for uh, charging performance. So we certainly are charging with a lot more wattage here. Uh, as the test is running. So we're getting 33 watts out of the internal charger now uh, with this test running here pretty much full blast at the moment. So it looks like uh, I think we'll probably see around the same score when the test concludes here in just a second. So let's let this finish up here. I think it's pretty much done and we'll see what uh, frames per second uh, we got on this as it was running through here and the results are in and we're getting pretty much the same score here. So I think what I can conclude from this test, and I'd love to get any feedback from all of you as I finish up this project for Kensington, uh, is that it looks as though, at least on the Mac, we're going to see a trade-off between battery charging and performance, and that if it's really taxing it hard, uh, the charger is just not going to deliver any power to the battery, but will keep everything running what appears to be at full speed. I'd imagine that there might be some throttling built into this somewhere along the line that if it really needs as much as possible that it would probably slow things down a bit. But at least in all these benchmarks we just ran, we didn't see that at all, even with a dead battery. So it looks like a lot of that 85 watt power adapter that you get from Apple is designed to give the computer its full amount of power and adequate charging capacity as well. And it looks like there's not a huge penalty here for using a 60 watt dock with a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, this dock will work fine with all the other Macs in the line because uh, the MacBook Pro 13 uses, I think, a 60 watt adapter, which is just fine for the dock here. And the new MacBook Airs use a 30 watt adapter along with the little 12 inch MacBook as well. So I think you can probably be okay with this. Uh, across the entire line. Uh, but if you are a power user, I think a Thunderbolt dock still is always the best solution uh, to get, especially with one of these uh, fancy MacBooks here. Now on the Windows side, especially with larger laptops, you might run into some trouble. I have a Dell XPS 15. It's probably about two or three years old now. Uh, I always get a warning message when I connect a dock to it because its power supply is 130 watts. Uh, so if you have a larger Windows laptop, you'll probably still want to use the power adapter. But most of the Windows Ultrabooks that we've looked at here over the last year or two come with a 60-watt USB-C power adapter. So in that case, a dock like this or some other 60-watt USB Type-C power delivery device should be fine. I do want to, though, show you one more cool thing with this little uh, energy meter that I've got because it also measures power going out. So let's go get one of my USB-C monitors and see what it tells us. All right, so I've got my Asus Zen screen here. This is a great little uh, external display that I bought a while back. I reviewed it on the channel and I'll put a link down below in the video description. I use this upstairs in my kitchen and usually it's on the other side of my Mac over here, which is why the uh, orientation here is reversed. But nonetheless, you can see how it operates. And what's cool with it is that it works with a single USB-C cable for power and display port video. And if you're curious, it is drawing about 5.7 watts or so, give or take. And what's cool about this adapter is that it's passing through display port and measuring the outbound power here. You can see that uh, little arrow there is going in the opposite direction. And if I pull the display out here and then plug in the Apple power adapter, you'll see that the uh, little arrow starts running in the opposite direction here. Let me reverse the display on there uh, to power the laptop once again. This is a cool little device that I think we'll be getting some use out of 
uh, in the coming months. And again, I'll put a link to it uh, in the video description if you want to pick one up for yourself. I found a bunch of them on Amazon, but not all of them did the wattage calculation. And I like to get a quick uh, look at that without having to run the calculation myself. So a lot of them just do the volts and the amps. Uh, this one does the wattage too, so good stuff there. So let me know if I missed anything in this test as I was running through things, but I think at least with the Mac, it looks like it will get enough of what it needs to be at full performance, even with a 60 watt dock, but your battery may not charge in the process or charge slower than it would if you had a more powerful adapter hooked up to it. Uh, typically with these devices, the MacBook Pro 15s, and typically for people who are real power users, I do suggest getting a Thunderbolt dock. You get more performance out of it. And most of the Thunderbolt docks I've tested, both from Kensington as well as other manufacturers, usually start out at around 85 watts of power delivery, with some going up to 100 watts for more of the high-powered Windows devices. So there are some uh, other choices out there for power delivery on the Thunderbolt side. Again, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. This was kind of a different video for me as I was walking through some uh, testing that I usually do off camera. So let me know what you think down in the comments below and we'll see you next time. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.